G'day guys, welcome back to another video, Sailing Learning by Doing. This is Marie. This is Vernon. <laughs> yeah. We saw you last week, we were just arriving in Port Stephens from a passage from, where did we come from? Yamba. Yamba. Yamba, yeah, Clarence 240, River. Clarence River, yeah, 240 miles down here to Port Stephens. And now we're parked up, beautiful and calm, real nice here. And we want to talk to you about, yeah, uh, another boat. We're maybe going to buy another boat. So yes, yeah, some of you are probably knowing, some of our patrons have uh, some fresh news, but for a few months we are watching for a new boat. And we were not really looking for a special boat. We really... We are. We, we're looking for a special boat. Yeah, for boat. a special in general, but we had many different directions. Like we looked for expedition boat, for aluminium cat, we watch for mono, for cats and talked with a lot of people and watch everywhere in the world what was in our price because it's also a good criteria to have something we can afford and take care of. So yeah, we, we watched and talked with a lot of boat owners and we had some different um, yeah. expectation about the new boat we would like to have. Yeah, but first probably what a lot of you are wondering is, well, why do you want another boat? Like, Chehalion is a great boat. We keep telling you that every week, and you see what a great boat she is. And, yeah, obviously, she is an amazing boat, and I'm very, very proud to own her and have been. The day I got her, I, I never thought I'd own a boat like this, to be honest. And having had her five years, i got nothing bad to say. Amazing boat. Marie probably has not as much positive feeling as me, it's not true. I really love Shealion. There, there's some things who are maybe more technical than some other boat, like it's a performance boat, it's going fast, it's reacting fast, and it's not maybe the more easy for a really beginner like me to learn how to sail on this kind of boat. But yeah. that was an amazing home and an amazing place to be, and I had really good adventure, and I'm really attached to this boat after yeah. three years on it. So why would we be selling her? Well, yeah, I mean, there's a few reasons, and one of them is size. We want something with a bit more space, a bit bigger. Um, challenge. Yeah, for me, it's also a, a new challenge, and that's a big thing. I've always um, felt best in my life when I'm outside my comfort zone. Um, I guess for some people that doesn't really make sense, but... I just push myself and I feel more alive when everything's not set and secure and I know everything what's going on. Learning by doing is the name of this channel but it's also how I've always lived and I just feel alive when I'm under pressure and a bit like I have to learn, I have to progress and yeah I feel like it, it, all the miles I've done in Shahalian I've sort of, I've learned what there is to learn and I've pushed her as hard as I want to push her. Of course, I haven't been in the Southern Ocean and that, and I'd love to surf down 10 meter waves, well, maybe like six, seven meter waves to start with anyway. But in general, I sort of feel like I know Shehalian, that she's an extension of my body when I'm sailing. And I sort of feel like it would be good to learn, to progress my sailing a little bit further with having a different boat. What about things for you for getting a new boat? Well, as you said about the space, but for me also, because after three years, as I told you in the next episode, I the had, last episode. Uh, oh yeah, as I told you in the last episode, uh, I had some trouble with seasickness, and I'm not really hoping that it's gonna improve more. I think it's already way better than what it was, but it's still something that I have to find. And I would like maybe to have a boat a bit less racy or at least less healing and try another sens sensation to see if it is in relation with Shearian or is it just I'm not made for the sea or I don't know but yeah, yeah I would like to have another feeling on a boat uh, to try to see if it's making me more comfortable and if it's the case being more involved in the sailing because as Vernon said he was kind of solo sailing a lot and uh, I learned some of, sa of the sailing skills on Shearian but because of this seasickness I was not always able to do way more and also the way it's set is not really made to be in team and I would like probably to be more involved in the sailing. Basically we've been, I mean you could break down 
into two categories the sort of boats we've been looking at. We're not really interested in getting another boat that's just slightly bigger than Shehali and that doesn't really make any sense. So you know a 40 foot Beneteau is not even interesting to us. Nothing against Beneteaus but it's not really a step up from Shehali and apart from it might have some more you know luxuries downstairs for example but that's not what we've been looking at. We've been looking at our we don't want something over 45 foot just because we don't need that and also the costs we're not rich we're living off doing YouTube videos um, the costs just go up like crazy as you know after 40 foot and then after 45 foot and after 50 foot um, so mono hulls in the 42 to 45 foot range and a bit heavier ones um, as Marie said, expedition, we want to go to Patagonia one day. We're planning on going to New Zealand. We want to be able to have a boat that can, you know, you can put a heater in and you can feel comfortable. You can live on it in any conditions. So things like um, center cockpit, Moody's, Norseman's. Um, what else did we look at? Uh, Trintella. Trintella. And there was, what was that French sounding one? Uh, Vokier. Vokier we looked at. Uh, not physically, just online. So we've just been casting our net pretty wide and, and seeing in our price range and in that criteria, these are the boats that would be available, you know, the year and all that sort of thing. And then on the other side of the coin, catamarans. Now, a lot of you will be, oh, you're going to the dark side and blah, blah, blah. And a lot of you out there who love catamarans will be saying, finally, I'm not either or. For me, it's just like a religion. You're either this or you're that. For me, it's not about that. It's like what I really want to have and what I want to achieve in sailing. And now I must say, as far as catamarans go, I'm, for my personal use, I'm not a big fan of about 80% of them. Um, I know they are great if you're in the Whitsundays or you're in the Caribbean, all these big fancy lagoons, all that sort of stuff. Awesome. I see it more as an apartment. You've got all the space and all that, but I, I want to have a boat that is just sails well. That's what I want and something that's strong and rigid and robust. And so the number of cats that we can afford and fit that criteria is pretty minuscule. So we haven't looked at many cats. Um, it's been more older 42, 45 foot monos and there's not so many of them around either so we've definitely narrowed our possibilities down. I guess long story short we've looked at one boat physically, we've looked at about a thousand boats online and today we're going to go and look at another boat and we're going to bring you along because this is the opposite of the Norseman we went and looked at. This is a catamaran and it's in the very small range of catamarans that we can afford and it's only just in that range, yeah, maybe. Um, might have to sell one of our livers or kidneys or something. <laughs> but um, we're gonna go and look at it today and bring you along. So it's over there. We just anchored and it's over there. We're gonna go to the beach and pick up Chris, the owner. I've asked him if I can film and he said, yep, no problem. And uh, we're gonna go and check it out. So join us. <laughs> Get out of the wind a bit and I'll talk a bit more about it. Let's go. Okay, this is a Crowther designed uh, wind speed 39. It's been extended, so it didn't start off as a 39, but it's a 39 for a few years. Obviously, Crowther's a well known design, performance catamaran. Um, very strong, very well built, simple, basically a multi hull of Shehalia. That's what I love about it. It's um, not the biggest, not the roomiest, like a lagoon or something like that, but it actually sails and it sails well and it's reasonably light but strong. It's got Kevlar on the hull so it can sit on the bottom well. It's got dagger boards, it's got liftable uh, rudders, it's got a turning mast. Yeah, it's performance orientated but it's very cruising. It's also got freezers and fridges and three double beds and all this. But let's show you around a bit. This is the cockpit. So we've got twin helms. Good view. These are covers come off, obviously. Got a hard top up here with some solar on it. Um, yep, steering. Autopilot inside. Proper big autopilot. Um, massive traveler going the whole way across the, the width of the whole boat, which is pretty cool. Uh, main sheet right here. Solar panels, davits. 
There's a Walker Bay 10 dinghy that goes on here. Yeah, you've got a seat on each side, great steering position, you can see out the whole thing. The winches, all the controls for the sails are up there on both sides. Um, this boat was hit by lightning in 2020 or 21, so all the electronics, wiring, everything, new Raymarine, everything, brand new Doppler Raymarine radar on it, um, autopilot, all the stuff over here, new sound system, fusion, all done well with the insurance from the lightning. So that's pretty good, electronics covered. Right, it's very windy up here today so we won't do too much talking up here but we'll just show you around a little bit. Um, here's the, the turning mast, twist the mast, X performance, all the seats, winches, all the, it's all good uh, Anderson winches everywhere, good thick mast, strong rigging, new radar, uh, dagger boards over here, Uh, new anti-skid, new paint everywhere. It's got a screecher on a furler, normal jib. Um, very strong beams in it. It's got 500 litres of fresh water and tanks here. It's got 150 litres of diesel. It's got two new new uh, engines in it. A lot of a lot of hatches everywhere, but it's very um, not a lot of windage. Let's call it that way. What do you reckon? Well, it's at least the triple of the space of you see. Here's the bathroom. Yeah, you got I don't know if you can see. The shower is here and you can have hot shower from the engine. And the toilets, a lot of space to store stuff. That's so hatches. quite light. It's really a nice one. So here we've got chart table. Nice, nice seat to sit on here, and we're all this is all brand new. All of this breakers and all it's all brand new. New stereo system, new radio VHF, all the stuff's new. Big table here. It's got 400 amp hours of new lithium in it. We've got the engines under here. There's a bit of a box in there, but very good to work on. Very cool. And then up front here, as you can see, lots of headroom for me. Um, this is, I guess, the master cabin. Good sized bed in here. Heaps of ventilation. Um, up in here would be a single berth, but also good ventilation. But that'll just be a junk room. Um, we, you know, as it's, as it is now, just lots of stuff in there. Spare parts. Uh, there's a sail for the Walker Bay. Spare, yeah, spinnaker things like that. Um, heaps of space, but compared to Shahalia, it's just insane. And the amount of light and windows everywhere. Little touches like this, see this here, that's a stanchion. It's not screwed through, it's just fiberglassed in and solid. So things like that are really good. This cassette here is the dagger board, so it's not in the middle or anything, it's sort of out of the way, but very, very good. Here's the kitchen. Um, yeah, it's way bigger. The light is amazing. The fridge is super practical to grab things because it's really at your eight on cohesion sheet and it's quite uh, at the back. You have a lot of storage. One of the things that I would like to add if we were taking this boat is to have an oven because it's just a grill and I like to bake. But yeah, the space and the way you can cook here is amazing. And here there's a similar cabin than the other side with the bed quite up, a lot of storage again, good light and the same as here it can be transformed as a earlier bed or just a storage. This is the aft cabin, a um, bit smaller bed, I guess you'd call it a double. Very big for one person, lots of storage as well. And in here, in here is the fridge freezer again. So you've got the fridge freezer there and one in the back here. 12 volt um, motor under there. 
And yeah, again, lots of storage everywhere. Good ventilation, two hatches, fan. Uh, this would be a guest, guest bedroom. Lots of storage hatches everywhere. Compared to Shahadion, a lot of space, a lot of space. And also the motion here, it's really windy outside and it's very quiet in the boat and we're hardly moving. Pretty cool. So Chris has owned Trade Runner for about 10 years now. Chris is 73 now and his wife is also, yeah, not really that interested in sailing long trips anymore. So that's the reason they're selling her, but they've looked after Trade Runner amazingly and oversaw the lithium and all the new Raymarine gear and the radar and all the new electronics and all that sort of stuff. So they've put new sails on her. So she's in great nick and so we took her out for a test sail. Now obviously this test sail took place in Port Stephens, Nelson Bay, so not out in the ocean, pretty calm water and we only had uh, 15 knots of breeze but it was just an initial evaluation basically it's my first time ever sailing on a cat so it was all new to me anyway I was pretty impressed the sails went up pretty easily it's really the loads aren't much more than Chehalion in 15 knots of wind we were pointing at 30 degrees uh, we were doing eight knots which is all good, you know, like um, I could do that on Chehalion, but we would be heeling over and groaning and the rail would be in the water. And on this boat, we were just gliding along. Honestly, it sort of felt a little bit boring. But if you talk to Marie, she'll probably say it was amazing. We were doing eight knots and I could have been doing a jigsaw puzzle. So yeah, it was a good first sail. Right, babe, that's a pretty long day. Lots of uh, feelings and... Well, no decisions as such, but what do you reckon? What do you think? What's your feeling? Um, well, I was feeling really good on it. For sure, I had a good feeling. More than some other boat we saw. But, yeah, it's, uh, it's a huge decision because we got to sell Chiellian before. Well, it's a lot of money too. Yeah, it's a lot of money. Yeah. You're going to not be bored on this kind of boat? Maybe. It's definitely a little bit more boring to sail because you go fast or faster but you don't feel it. There's no healing, there's no, yeah, I guess because Shehalion bounces around and like you feel every little gust and it accelerates and it goes up and down whereas this, this cat just just goes. I guess it's like driving a, a big Cadillac at 140 or a Ferrari at 140. They're going to be the same speed but they feel totally different. But I guess for you, that's good, because we still get places fast, but it just, it's crazy. Oh, for sure. When we were doing, when we were doing eight knots at the maximum, yeah, that was definitely more comfortable yeah. than on Chiaria. Yeah. But it was super calm, so yeah. if I have to see on ocean, that it's definitely more comfortable. Yeah, I liked it. I mean, for me... The simplicity, the fact that it's basically like Chihalion, but just a catamaran. You know, there's no massive complications. There's, you know, it's just very simple. Everything's just well laid out. I can really relate to that. Um, I know that all of the things that potentially would break or that I have to maintain are pretty much the same as Shahalian. The engines, I can wrap my head around straight away. There are three cylinders like we've got here. There's really nothing that's on that's going to blow me away on that boat in terms of maintenance, and I don't think it will cost much more to maintain than Chehalion, apart from there's two engines, but that's just an extra filter or two, you know, it's not really, it, I'm doing the work, so it's not really that big a deal. Um, the one thing, obviously, that, that will be the big cost in the next few years will be the standing rigging, but I'll do that myself, so that'll be probably between three and five grand just to do that myself. The sails are great. Engines are great. Everything else, we'll put the Rockner on there, so we'll have a good anchor. It's got new chain as well. Uh, we'll have to figure out a dinghy situation, but I feel good about it, to be honest. Um, yeah, as you said, we have to sell Shahalian, but I feel good about that too. It's such a, she's such a good boat, and she's well known now through the channel. I think she'll sell fast. So. Are you still confident? Well, the proposition of two weeks were a bit ambitious. Yeah, might have been a bit ambitious saying I could sell it in two weeks, but we'll see. Anyway, I think we should sleep on it. Yeah, yeah, think about it. Well, for sure it would be nice to have a bit more space and having the possibility to receive some people. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. It, it would miss the oven, but we can probably sort it out too. Oh yeah, too. that's a minor detail. 
Yeah. Um, the bathroom is quite big and mm. simple, and yeah, I really like the, and, the. Yeah, I think you know we can do fast passes on it. You know we can do comfortably. You know what was well the last passage 170 980 miles it wasn't rough or anything but that was sort of pushing it whereas that will just be a normal passage on this cat and probably upwards of you know over 200 miles relatively easy um, so that'll be that'll be good obviously you have to learn how to how to drive it and sail it but that's that's part of the challenge that's what i would like i think anyway well um well yeah back to the camera we will th think about this and and discuss it more and well basically just sleep on it i personally sort of probably know what i will decide you might too but let's just talk about it in the morning yeah yeah i think yep. it's better to yeah yep. to have a good night on top of it to be sure because yep. it's quite a big decision so anyway let us know in the comments below what you guys feel what we should do it'd be interesting obviously it's not going to you know impact our decision because we would have made this by the time you see the video but anyway Give us your decision because I know a lot of you out there just love Shehalian as as we do, but you've been following along and, and you love the boat. You know, she is an amazing boat. I've got absolutely nothing bad to say about her. And I know we'll be sad to see her go if we do sell her. And I know some of you will be too. So let us know what you think. Um, and yeah, we wouldn't be making this decision and, you know, stepping up and spending more money if we weren't confident in... Uh, our patrons and our and our continued income from making these videos we're sort of gambling a little bit oh i'm dodging the light here we're sort of gambling a little bit not really i mean there's this you know this is what we have savings for and there's no point just leaving stuff you know no point just leaving money in the bank these days you don't get any interest on it so we might as well invest it in our future um and this boat seems you know it's not really gambling it is what it is it's a boat it's something something solid and um but anyway, as I said, we wouldn't be doing this probably without the help from all you patrons out there. Um, yeah, massive shout out to you guys. Um, we've managed to meet a lot of you now on the way down, uh, Australian guys anyway. And uh, just huge shout out to all the other patrons around the world. America obviously is our biggest um, base of patrons, but yeah, Europe as well, quite a few. And yeah, thanks so much to all of you. Really, really... Uh, well, it means everything to us, and um, we hope we can bring you these these videos for a long amount of time. We're in this for the long term. If we do buy another boat, it'll just be another adventure, but we're still going to go to Tasmania, New Cal, New Zealand. That's still the plan. We're not going to do anything different. We'll just be getting there with a bit more space, maybe a bit further. And yeah, patrons, if you come and join us, you'll have your own cabin instead of getting sort of squashed in the back like where mum was. So that'll be a bonus to you all. Anyway, we'll um, see you next week with our decision and how we're moving on. I'm pretty excited. Yeah, it's stress and excitement. Uh, stress? Well, a little bit. Like, it's a <sighs> lot of things to do in a short time and it's changing the way we are living. I don't know. Like, yeah, but it's, it's exciting. Yeah, she says it's stress. I say it's exciting. <laughs> anyway, we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.